Music is people. The hills and valleys of Kentucky have resounded with the distinctive songs of a hearty folk for over three centuries. The music of Kentucky is drawn from the sinews of its pioneer people and their ancient heritage. From the very beginning, music has been a bright thread spun through the homespun fabric of the everyday life of the Kentucky. And what is their music? They've sung of all the basics of existence. They've sung of birth and death, love and hate, of courting and betrayal, of battles and loneliness, sorrow and fun, work and loss. With their truck lashed to wagons or long boats, these early Anglo-Saxon minstrels trudged through the gaps from Virginia or pulled down river and rafts and longboats on the waters of the Ohio. The first white man in Cumberland Gap was Dr. Walker, an English chap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, way down down there in Cumberland Gap. Daniel Boone on Pinnacle Rock, he killed him into his old flat lock. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, way down down there in Cumberland Gap. Into the new green wilderness of Kentucky, they brought a legacy of Elizabethan ballads, which slowly through each new generation, they began to fashion into their own country folk tunes. The songs of sailors and soldiers and poets had kindled their sense of adventure and exploration in a new land to be had for the taking. Now, some settlers were self-taught musicians, others was trained in melody making. Theirs was a tradition which had flowered into an age of song. Commoners and courtiers alike sing of ancient legends of bravery and despair, telling their tales with music. The isolated mountaineers of Southern Appalachia became America's contemporary Elizabethans. Collectors and scholars begin trips in the valleys and ridges in search of old ballads. Miss Jean Thomas, a native Kentuckian and court reporter known to her mountain friends as the Trips and Woman. And the entire Ritchie family of Viper, Kentucky, all became renowned collectors. Well, as the country grew, Kentucky grew. The river took the people west to the Mississippi and on down to New Orleans. At the Battle of New Orleans in 1815, the Kentucky frontiersman really immortalized himself in history and in song with his fantastic marksmanship. Now, the ballad about these hunters of Kentucky was later used by Andrew Jackson as a campaign song. Ye gentlemen and ladies fair who grace this famous city, just listen if you've time to spare while I rehearse a ditty. And for the opportunity, conceive yourselves quite lucky, for tis not often that you see a hunter from Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky, the hunters of Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky, the hunters of Kentucky. Freeborn race, each man to fear a stranger. Whatever the game, we join, chase, despise, and time and danger. And if a daring foe annoys, whatever his strength enforces, we'll show him that Kentucky boys are alligator horses. The old Kentucky, the hunters of Kentucky. The old Kentucky, the hunters of Kentucky. The plunk of the banjo and mandolin, both probably derived from the lute, rang out across the waters and captured the joys of the music makers. Places, doing big things and having a high old time. 
the banjo became the new American folk voice of the country and city people. They played in a style called frailing, which is still used by many players, old timers and young alike. to the pious mountain folks as the devil's instrument began to enliven the hoedowns and reels. Young people who were lured away from the innocent singing at play parties by the dastardly sound <laughs> were scorned by the elders as unrepentant sinners. So Mr. Lincoln of Kentucky went to Washington and hotheads fired on a fort called Sumter. On both sides were singing armies they marched with their instruments alongside their rifles. Sometimes camped on opposite sides of a river, awaiting the dawn's battle, rebel and Union soldiers would join in the same songs. The boys leapt home across Kentucky's ravaged land to their burned barns and silent chimneys. Finally, the bluegrass regained its bloom and Kentucky prospered in its fame for good tobacco, sipping whiskey, fast horses, lovely women, and plaintive music. Even Stephen Foster gave the state a song. the roads pushed further into the hollers and coal mines slashed across the green mountains. The land and its people endured a new kind of ravishment and still the people sing. Their voices tell a new tales in a new way. They sing of moonshining and feuding and hard times and high passion. And there were young voices now raised in protest. With the mines came disasters, black lung, explosions, cave-ins, death. On the black mountains, men, women, and children waited and wept their keening lament. Songs mean? They mean that music is people, 
and that folk is the music of the people, giving music back to the people. And that is the sound of Kentucky. Yeah. 